Welcome back, Acorn fans, to another replay exhibition match cast. This time we're going to be on Mantania transfer between Electro and Kronos. Kronos being, I believe, Chris Howarth. Not sure if he changed his name or what, or if he's a new player, but it looked like on the game replay site it was actually Chris Howarth, who we've seen before. Long standing member, so I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Why the name is different. Anyway. Looks like it's going to be Grekum versus Grekum on Mantania Transfer, which is a map we've seen a fair amount recently. And where is... Okay, so Electro just building up, getting very quick. Faro and Seppi, standard Grekum start. And same with Kronos. Also getting the same start. So both players not really going for anything too unusual. Just going for your standard, get some economy. This is a fairly large map, so economy is definitely the way to go. There's not much reason to do much else. Economy is the way to go. I would not recommend doing any non-economic play or anything like that, just because if you do do if you try to do rushes too much in this map, it becomes rather difficult to actually get them to the opponent's base. What when they're unprepared? You can do them with proxies, but you can't easily do them just by sending it straight out of your base and making that it. So, yeah, here we go, Electro setting up two of his Octos, two RPs, another one just probably for scouting. And Kronos doing the same thing with one Octo, there we go, two Octos, so yes. Both players doing identical things, though Kronos is going very quickly for Q Plasma, while Electro is going purely for Liquid Crystal. And, yeah, purely for Liquid Crystal, just waiting, he's going to wait until he gets a bit more LC to be actually build up this Octo here into a resource processor. But once he gets that, then he can go. So, neither player really doing anything particularly out of the ordinary. Chrono sending out Nocto Scout, so that will be something you'll be able to see what Electro is up to very shortly. And Electro not just building up anything beyond RPs at this point. He is going purely for... Basically purely for non for everything but RPs. He's just going... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. I apologize, I, my cast was not on the actual cast. Thankfully, the YouTube video is recorded separately, so it will be able to have everything. So anyway, as I was saying, Electro in the top right corner and Kronos in the bottom left corner. Both players are Grekum, both players going for economic gameplay. Kronos building up an Octopod very quickly, but other than that, everyone who's watching on Twitch, you did not miss anything. There really wasn't anything going on. What you see now is just... that's all there is. So nothing exciting has happened. Oh yeah, and there's also this Octo Scout going out, that's another thing. Which, now the 334 mark, from Alexa's point of view, is hitting the Arcticus. So yeah, really not much going on. There's... this game is starting out quite slowly. Kronos getting his Octopod Patrol, and... the Octo coming in, dealing some damage. Other than that, not much going on. So... Don't really see anything too exciting happening. Was this, if something exciting does happen, I will make sure to let you all know. But for the moment, everything is very boring. Because both players are building up economy. Since this sort of map is the sort of map you build up economy on. And Grekum doesn't have a lot of cheap scouting units, so they can't easily just harass or deal with their opponents slightly or start to have some engagements until they get around to advanced structures tech, which is about six minutes into the game. So yeah, Grekum versus Grekum Mirrors is one of the reasons why I don't like Grekum Mirrors very much, is that they take a while to get going. But once they get going, you can get a lot of weird Chrono Port shenanigans, and that's very fun to watch. But at the start, it's not much going on. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. And it looks like Seppi being built up very quickly, so Chrono's very quickly getting himself a reef. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Chris Aworth that probably did just change his name, since this is the sort of thing that Chris would do. And really, a new player is not going to be building a reef from a lifted Seppi. I've that's something that people tend not to do without a bit of practice, without a bit of, without a bit of knowing about how the game works. I'm a bit curious exactly how he changed his name, though. I'm a little bit curious who exactly this Kronos person is. I'm pretty sure it is Chris Aworth, but... I was under the impression you couldn't actually change your in-game screen name. Granted, you might have bought another copy of the game and worked from there. Anyway, Octo... Fight coming in here. Electro will not be losing, or might be losing that Octo, hard to say. 
but it looks like that was just a minor scout. With Faro's coming in later, Electro definitely prepared for that Octo coming in, which looks like it was coming in near the present. Uh, no, it wasn't actually, that's been completely aborted. So, Kronos scouting completely aborted, just went for an Echo Scout there, seeing what Electro was up to. And Electro building a, a lot of Faro. Oh wow, he's actually... This is a lot more Faro's than usual. Something is going on here. The, normally you don't build this many Faro's. Normally you build maybe one or two. No, he, he is spamming Faro's. Uh, he's going to go for a rush in this one. He's going to go for, I mean, four minutes. Not especially rush timing, but on a map like Mantania Transfer, that pretty much counts. So yeah, he is going nuts for this. He has the money for it too. I'm a little bit surprised. Oh, he's, whenever he has the money, he's going for it. Kronos does not appear to be at all prepared for this. Getting himself a bit more economy up, but... No, this is the present. No, actually, Kronos is at the present, and he is only building his economy. He isn't really doing too much beyond that. Getting his Seppies, getting his Reefs, probably getting advanced structures fairly soon. While Electro just going for tons and tons of Faros. Not sure when he's going to actually go for this as an attack, though. He's going to go wait until it falls near the unplayable pass, or he's going to go attack as soon as he gets it acronally. But either way, this is going to be very difficult for Kronos to deal with. I mean, at this point, looking at probably about a dozen Faros coming in by the time the attack actually occurs. That's a lot of Faros. That's, that's not trivial. That's going to be tricky to deal with. Well, Kronos does have his Octopod, does have a Sepi Faro Power actually being sent out, so he's going for a quick expansion. And there we go, advanced structures coming up. But Electro right now definitely has the upper hand. Just building Faro after Faro after Faro. And here we go, a dozen Faros coming up straight towards Kronos' base. And this is going to be... Oh, it's not quite a dozen yet. It's ten Faros coming up, two more coming in to bring up the rear. And another Faro, so yeah, there was about a dozen Faros. Baker's doesn't at this point. Electra's being generous. He's giving Kronos one more for free. And Kronos, on the other hand, is being very passive. He's staying inside his base. He's He has his one expansion going up. It's going out towards a corner expansion. So, I mean, Electro might expand out here, but it's not especially likely. While Electro, on the other hand, he is prepared for attack. And I think he's waiting until it falls in the unplayable pass. He's right at the edge of it. Probably going to be attacking right about here. And... Yeah, that's going to be very powerful when it hits. So Kronos, he's going to be getting hit by that at the unplayable past edge or very near to it. Probably the green time move will be what's propagating the assault, because I'm guessing that's what Electro did. And another expansion here. So Kronos is very focused on economy, which is going to be proving detrimental very shortly. Well, it would appear it's going to be proving detrimental very shortly, but it might not. He might actually be able to pull this off if he builds up at least some military. He's going to need some units very quickly. He does have advanced structures. He does have the opportunity to build a spire. If he builds up some Faro pods, he could get away with this, but even then it's kind of tricky because Faros can detect, and they aren't bad against air. So Electro, near the, or inside the Impilable Past, and this is when the attack occurs. The green time is propagating it, and Apparently it's also propagating a retreat. That seems like a mistake, but Electro is possibly waiting for this Kronos. Jumping back, a little bit suspicious, but not much is going on. Still, he is clearly suspicious, putting a bookmark right where he suspects Electro is attacking from. And other than that, he is not really doing much. Not sure why... Why is... Oh, see, this is when Electro was actually... Sorry, this is when Kronos was actually building up advanced structures. Back to the 605 mark. Kronos, however, is at the 853 mark in the present. Not building up any Spire. He's focused heavily on getting his economy set up, getting his expansion set up. Not at all focused on getting a Spire or getting advanced structures. While Electro is... Now he's going for the Assault. The Red Time Wave will be propagating it once that comes along, but he is assaulting. He is jumping away from that Assault, and... He is not committed too much, but he, is, he has another half dozen Faros. It's going to be very powerful assault when it actually hits. Let's see, when is Kronos... Kronos at the present? He's building up more RPs. He's definitely going heavily for the economy, but he's not... Oh, he's going to see it now. He's got his auto coming in. It's going to scout out what's going on very shortly. But prior to that, he has no idea what's going on. And, of course, it's kind of too late at this point. The Faros are walking across the map. The Red Time was going to be carrying it along, and 
There is still a chance to deal with this, but it's going to be very hard. I don't think Kronos can actually build up enough units in time. He can build up the Spire and then build up from there a bunch of Pharopods. The Octopods could be effective, but they don't have splash damage. I guess as many units splash damage would be very useful to have. On the other hand, for their cost, Octopods probably would be a more effective solution than Pharopods, as they are cheaper, don't require the tech, and... Well, Pharopods are actually slightly better against ground than against air, but it probably would still work. So this is back at the 8-minute mark. Kronos has not built up that base yet. And Electro coming in at the 9-minute mark. Pharos attacking from both entrances. They are about to hit the Articus, but I think that Electro probably just moved in. No, he is, he is attack moved in, tearing apart that Articus in no time. And here we have over a dozen Pharos coming in here. Tearing apart everything Kronos has. Kronos jumping back, seeing what's going on, and probably going to try to build up what he can to deal with this. Maybe build a couple Octopods. That's all he really has at this point. He doesn't have, like I said, no Spire, no Pharopods can be built up. He does have a causally independent base, however, so he could still, well, maybe go in the future, get Chronoporting and send units back to defend, but that's rather unlikely. It's a possibility, but it's one that requires that he basically gambles away this base in the meantime. So at this point... Electro is dealing lots of damage. We'll be tearing apart this Articus, like I said, in no time. We already saw how that happened. So Electro jumping back to the 840 mark, and Kronos jumping back even further to the 832 mark. But even from here, it does not have the Chrono Energy to actually build up anything. He's like one order's worth of Chrono Energy, and using that... What is using that to do? Not much, it would appear. Moving this Octopod into position, that's really all he did with his getting it out of the patrol route, moving into a more advantageous position to get rid of the Faros as they come up. One of the Faros will be going down, but the rest of the Faros able to take care of the Octopod before dying, so this is very quickly going against Kronos. Electro, his Faro rush is proving extremely powerful. Losing another Faro, but even that's not enough. His entire plan is we're going out without a hitch. These units all being destroyed very quickly, and this is basically it. The game is the game's over. There's nothing more to be said about this. Kronos has no way of getting out of this. Electro's assault is way too powerful. Kronos, however, does have this causally independent base. So that's still something. But I don't see how he'd be able to build up something with that in time for it to be effective. It's just... It's just not enough there. I mean, it's not enough money. He does have Chronoporn he could build from a reef. But Electro just needs to find that base and that's it. I mean, most of what... Kronos had most of his income has just been destroyed. He has two RPs here and will be getting a few more later on, but Electro, let's see, yeah, later on. Actually, no, he doesn't even have any in the, near the present, so I'm not sure what chance he expects to have, really. More Faros streaming in from Electro's base, though Electro really needs to focus more on figuring out where Kronos has hidden, like where the rest of Kronos' forces are, because his main base, Electro has torn apart the main base. There's really nothing that Kronos can do, even if he stands up all these units to fight off all the Faros, there's not that much he can do. He can kill off a few Faros here and there, but that's about it. So these Faros proving extremely effective. And Electro has pretty much won this game with these Faros, but not going to count Kronos out yet. He still has this base here. He still has a couple Octopods coming up. He still could build Faropods and use those to assault and defend with splash damage, like I said, would be quite effective getting rid of the Faros. Though the Faros are detectors, so the Faropods are not going to be able to take advantage of their cloaking. Now Electro is... Is he still producing Faros? It looks like he is. Yes, he's continuing to produce Faros, still streaming them out, not moving them anywhere but the main base, but he actually isn't really moving them anywhere at this point. Really, what he needs to do now is scout around the map, just send them everywhere, figure out where Cronus is hiding. But, no, he's not doing that at all. He's, he's going straight to this natural expansion. I don't know why he's doing that, why he isn't trying to figure out where Cronus is hiding. Maybe he's, is he, if he's expecting a counterattack, this is rather implausible. I mean, yes, Kronos could go for a counterattack now, especially since he's being left alone. But Electro doesn't really have any reason to fear a counterattack. He's just destroyed most of Kronos' economic base and military base. So, right now, I'm not sure what Electro's plan is. It's a little bit confusing. I think what he's thinking is that he can take out any units that might come through if he did miss something and. But even then, it seems like he's... No, it doesn't seem like he's thinking about this. He's not thinking it through. 
Unless he's thinking of regrouping before attacking anywhere else, but at this point he has the chrono energy to move, to move around the map, figure out what's going on. And yeah, I don't know why he's not exploring, why he's not seeing what's going on. I think Electro might just not be used to what happens when your opponent is in this position. Like where they actually are still alive, but heavily crippled. In a lot of games, it, this doesn't actually happen very frequently. It's kind of surprising, it's happened a lot in these last few casts where we've had some players expand around the map and be able to avoid getting spotted for, for anything, really, because they're just hanging around the map, but really, this is unusual. Grekum has this happen sometimes, but this is a really unusual thing to have happen. Like, they are not that great at dealing with this, so I'm a little bit surprised that I'm a little surprised Electro is not attacking Kronos' bottom right base here, and I don't know if Kronos is going to be able to take advantage of this. I mean, Electro is still further in the past, but he hasn't even found out about it. Which makes me suspicious that something is going to come up later on, I'm not sure what. So, Kronos just looks like he's just waiting on everything going on here. Oh, wow, and apparently this game is actually starting to bog down a bit. <laughs> Too many units, Electro. Go kill some stuff. No, I'm not kidding. We're on fast forward, and it's taking... There's... It's... It's like it's on slow-mo, and we're on fast forward. This is not encouraging. Maybe it helps if I go to 200% speed? No, that doesn't help at all. Okay. This also never happens. No one ever builds this many units in Akron. This is this is a first. No one ever builds this many units. I don't know why this is being why this is taking so long to play out. I think it might be just because I'm trying to stream this as well, so that's probably probably adding to the load. Though it really shouldn't be, because I have enough cores. I have a, well, quad core system, and only two of the cores should be taken up by Akron and Resequence, respective, well, one each. So I'm not sure why this is taking so much more CPU time. But here we go, Electro does appear to be scouting out this base here, so he should be able to destroy it fairly quickly. But yeah, not sure what's going on here, why it's taking so long. Like I said, speeding up the game does not really help. This is the fastest the game will go. <laughs> but Electro will at least eventually find Kronos. That's that's one thing to keep in mind. We'll we'll go. And Electro, I just said I'm not doing. I'm streaming at the same time. It's gonna use more CPU time. Sorry, Electro's in the chat. He's he's basically yelling at me about having about this thing slowing down on me. It's like, well, yeah, it's slowing down on me because I'm doing this, and I have DX3 running, and I have Open Broadcaster software running. Because I need to have DX3 passing through Open Broadcaster software because my upload bandwidth isn't high enough to be able to just use Open Broadcaster software on its own to be able to do streams. If I want to get the good YouTube quality videos. It's kind of a iffy setup, but it's all I have. But Electro is properly scouting at any rate, which is good. That is good, he is at least scouting out, seeing where everything is going to be. But yeah, this is the first time it's ever caused this much problem. I'm actually going to double check that I'm not running stuff unnecessarily. Might be other things that are running in the background that are just taking up too much CPU time. And how much? Hmm. Yeah, maybe, but... I don't know, I had Visual Studio up in the background too, that might have been slowing it down. But yes, hopefully this will speed up shortly. I, this is, like I said, this is the first time this ever happened to me. Actually, I might as well just kill Chrome as well. Uh, okay.
Are we speeding up? Or are we going faster? No, we're not going faster quite yet. And Kronos is continuing to build up, like I said, Electro will find him, will find his base, will find him out, and we'll be able to tear him apart, probably in about an hour at this rate, or at least from our point of view. And let's see, so... No, there's... Okay, what the hell's going on? We have... Yeah, I don't know why it's spiking as much as it is, actually. Because, yeah, half my CPU is idle. Or, two of my cores are idle right now. I guess I just take off this affinity here. But yeah, resequence is spiking itself, and OBS is using its own thing. So, yeah, they're not sure why this is being so hard. Sorry about this, guys. I really kind of wish it would just go faster. And yes, I am, in case you're wondering, I am tweaking the affinity so that they are avoiding each other. But at this point, Resequence is still using up a full core. Like, it's using up as much CPU time as it can use up. And there's still spare CPU time, so that's all that Resequence can do. It's not fully multi-threaded, so it's not able to handle... I'm still a bit surprised at how much it's going. I mean, CPU shouldn't be running that hot. No, CPU's fine. It's running 50 degrees Celsius, not too bad. So yeah, at this point, Electro... Electro does find out where Cronus' base is. But... Like I said, it's going to be a little while before this is completely destroyed. I don't know why it's taking so long, so... This is... Really rather disappointing. <sighs> and of course, is commenting on the cost of Farabaz. I'm not sure. He doesn't look like he's supposed to have Farabaz at this point. But yeah, that's still kind of disappointing. Why are we not getting anything? By the way, this is going to be the final attack coming in. All the Faros walking very slowly and deliberately towards Kronos' expansion. And once they hit, that should be pretty much game. Which happens in the green time move, as we can see from the looks of it. Or should, at least some attack happens on the green time move. But the main attack isn't quite hitting yet. But it will hit soon. Oh hey, stuff's moving faster now. Oh, well, slightly faster. I don't know if you guys have noticed the time wave effect that you normally get when you're changing players has not been coming up recently. I guess that's something that happens when the CPU doesn't come up a lot, it doesn't bother playing those various effects. Interesting to note, I guess. Anyway, here we go. Two Faros coming in. This is not the Faro attack that we were seeing before that was being propagated. The red time wave should propagate that, which will take a little while. So 
Or here you're doing damage you can to the research processor. But yeah, not really much more to be said about that one. And really that's all I can do right now is show you pretty effects in this game because it's taking forever to compute the state of the game. Actually, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to see what happens if I turn... No, I don't want to turn off recording because we're just about to see... We are just about to see the big fight. The big game-ending fight will be coming up in a moment. Assuming the players don't jump away from it, although the red time wave is what's carrying it. But it will be coming up in a moment. In a few minutes, actually, more likely. But it will be coming up, nonetheless. Sparrow's here, coming in, and dealing all the damage they can. Very shortly. I keep saying that. I know it's not true. Because I know it's taking a while. And I don't know why. I may want to look in CPU overclocking. Normally I wouldn't, but in this case, it might be necessary. But in the meantime, fancy depth of field effects. Ah! Although I, I think on Twitch you can't really see this because the compression ruins it. But on YouTube, you'll be able to see my fancy depth of field effects. At least in the current state, which isn't particularly well polished. But still. Was Ledger doing anything in his main base? He is not doing anything in his main base. He just has all of his economy still building up. He has some Faros coming down here, too. And Kronos' base is... Starting to get assaulted, so Electro's forces finally coming in to deal with Kronos' base. Kronos probably going to be sending out his units, sending out his octopods to deal with that, but they will die. These Faros will win. This mass of two dozen or so Faros will win the day. Like, there's, there's no denying that. It's, this game is over. But I want to see it actually finish. So it's a test of patience now. I apologize to all your viewers, but this, I'm afraid, it has become a bit of a test of patience. So far, I was very slowly inch crawling inexorably towards their victory, but slowly as molasses. Slowly as molasses on this particular planet. I think this is the Haven tile set, so yeah. Ice planet. Slowly as molasses on an ice planet. Actually, it might be co I think this planet might be cold enough that the molasses would start would get so cold that it start to have super fluidity properties, and then you'd have just that might actually start flowing backwards. It might be so cold. Speaking of flowing backwards, let's check Kronos' point of view. Kronos is not really doing too much. He has his octopods just nicely set up, but he's not actually commanding anything at this point. And Electro has jumped back! No! This is exactly what I was talking about. The molasses is flowing backwards! Why is the molasses flowing backwards? No, oh, it actually pauses pretty responsibly. Oh, holy cr okay, that was random. So Kronos just randomly surrendered, apparently pausing, cleaning that all up. Thanks for the suggestion, Electro. I probably should have done that a while back. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, despite the, you know, test of patience ending there. That was a little bit... That was unexpected. I do not know why it went and screwed up like that, but... The game is finally over. Finally. Have a good night, and hopefully you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next week. Wouldn't have been totally put off by the fact that it took forever for this match to finish. But, at the very least, it's, it's a game. 
and it happened, and it finished. And it shows that Faros are actually really powerful. Do not underestimate the Faro. They're really powerful. They beat the crap out of CPUs. Have a good night, everybody.